Hello, I'm Michael Hansen and welcome to the channel. In this video, I will be presenting my abstract for submission to OD Tug's K-Scope 18 in Orlando, Florida. To my viewers, K-Scope is recognized as one of the best Oracle conferences to attend, offering excellent content from developers, administrators, architects, business users, and vendors. K-Scope is hosted by OD Tug, which is a non-for-profit Oracle data technology user group which sole purpose is keeping its members on the cutting edge of the constantly changing Oracle technology landscape. Since 2014, I've been employed at a Fortune 500 Government Services Corporation as the EPM architect. In 2015, working alongside my co-presenter, Trina Nguyen, we redesigned our EPM planning application from a block storage option to an aggregate storage option that enabled users to plan directly to an ASO application. The objective of this redesign was to reduce our overall cost of ownership by managing a single set of metadata, calculation scripts, and logic, as well as improve the forecasting efficiency in a self-service reporting planning and model. I'll be honest, there are some people that thought we were crazy, but two years later, we wouldn't go back and change a thing. In 2017, I delivered my first ever set of K-Scope presentations. This was for the planning track, ASO plan type, the final frontier, and the EPM integration track to seek out new integrations with ODI. It was an awesome experience to share the use case, lessons learned, and challenges tackled to deliver what may be the first large scale ASO planning solution that enabled users directly to plan to an ASO application. The presentation received four and a quarter stars with such comments as, awesome creative solution, extremely interesting concepts, impressive build, and nice to see such a solution. For K-Scope 18, we hope to return, and this time, focus in on the methodologies, concepts, and most importantly, share the syntax that enabled us to take our ASO calculations to warp speed. In 2017, we sped up our ASO calculations by 30 to 60 times faster using the same hardware and with an ever-growing data set. So judges, stay tuned for the topics we want to present at K-Scope 18. Welcome back. Before we get into the topics I would like to cover for K-Scope 18, I want to briefly cover a few underlying principles to ASO calculations. In 2014, Joe Watkins came up with an ingenious approach for performing ASO calculations that was detailed by Cameron Lackpore in K-Scope 14. Academic theory theorized ASO calculation speeds of possibly 20 to 500 times faster than BSO. This is performed by utilizing a dynamic member and writing the results back to an ASO application as an input data. It really involves three steps. Step one uses an S-based formula to drive the calculation with a non-empty tuple. Step two uses a maxL allocation script to write the member formula back as a stored member. Finally, step three, if you're using planning, would be to launch the maxL script from a BSO application with Run Java to write that calculation back as input. Now this topic has been covered in past K-Scope sessions, but our focus for K-Scope 18 will be on the methodologies, concepts, and syntax to further enhance these principles to achieve the theorized ASO calculation efficiency of what I call warp speed. So the first methodology I will cover for the K-Scope 18 session is something Trina and I call PAM. PAM stands for Point of View Adapted Method. Most of us are aware how the order of a dimension specified in report scripts affect performance. Now naturally we wondered if there was a similar correlation to ordering dimensions in a Maxell allocation script. Now what we found was interesting. The order doesn't matter, but what really does matter is where we specify the dimensions in the allocation script. The concept of PAM is relocating members of the POV section, relocating members from the POV section of a Maxell allocation and specifying those members in the mount, range, and context and target section of the allocation script. To quickly explain the potential performance improvements, let's take a look at the syntax of a typical Maxell allocation on my right and the optimized Maxell script on my left with PAM and compare the performance. Fascinating. Both scripts have the same member specified, same data, same hardware. The only difference is the rearrangement of the items in the POV and the subsection of the allocation script. A teaser to the next methodology is something we call NEO. NEO stands for non-empty subset optimization. NEO is applying non-empty subsets and cross joints to filter dimension members that have relevant data 
in a cross-join subquery prior to allocating amounts in a Maxell allocation or calculation script. This optimization technique can significantly improve the performance of Maxell allocations, enable calculations to execute on targeted members which cannot utilize non-empty tuples in the member formula, as well as it's something required for Zach, and also is a workaround for a technical limitation that is encountered due to a large application ASO size. Now, this technical limitation prevents optimization of non-empty tuples in member formulas. It has been confirmed by Calvin and also Cameron Lepore that the performance of non-empty tuples in member formulas are not always guaranteed in ASO applications. The ability to pre-filter members with data prior to an allocation is incredibly invaluable. This one methodology has helped us increase our speed significantly. Now, Trina Nguyen came up with this approach in 2015 when she was working around the technical limitations described previously. The most fascinating thing about NEO, it can be applied to any dimension that typically uses leaves in a Maxell allocation. The next methodology we would like to review for K-Scope 18 is ZAC. That is zero allocation clears. ZAC is an absolute necessity for an ASO application that is utilized in a multi-user environment where users are able to run calculations and submit data to directly. The reason is, is ASO only provides two clears to basically remove data, that is physical and logical, both of which will cause clear contention issues for users while running business rules or submitting data and a clear is taking place. The zero allocation clear works much like a logical clear, but the uses an allocation method combined with NEO to clear targeted data. The benefit is Zach can be utilized in a multi-user environment and we will be reviewing the syntax and the use cases in our case scope session. Another methodology we will also cover is something we call PAS, which stands for planning allocation synchronously. One major advantage of planning directly to an ASO application is the ability to launch planning rules synchronously. This enables scripts to be executed across multiple S-based cores for faster calculation performance. However, there are challenges to performing synchronous executions. These challenges include preserving order of calculations, for example, such as rev burdens before org burdens, and notifying users when calculation is fully complete. We'll cover tips and tricks for executing allocations and calculations synchronously, as well as S-based config changes that will help optimize performance for running allocations and business rules from a planning system in a multi-user ASO application environment. Finally, we will cover concepts of how data symmetry affects allocation speed and review tips and tricks to make allocation scripts more legible. In conclusion, this is all really exciting stuff with a lot of benefit for either S-based or planning and large ASO applications from a reporting perspective. But we'd like to thank the judges for taking your time to watch this video and we really look forward to the opportunity to possibly present at KScope 18 in Orlando, Florida. Thanks for watching guys.